First things first, my fellow troubadours, I have nothing personal against Don Hanley. Love his music. How could you not? And the fact that I love his music so much makes this all the more difficult. He has 60 people that go out there to file claims against YouTubers. All right, now I'm gonna explain to you what's going on and how this came to my attention. But first, the only reason I'm choosing to make a video about this is because if you're a musician or anyone who puts out content or aspires to put out content on YouTube, this especially affects you. And I care about you. Okay, so today I was going over some of the comments I received on one of my more recent videos entitled, Five Songs You Must Learn to Play at Your Acoustic Cover Gigs. Link in the description. Definitely check it out. Anyway, I received a comment from one of my subscribers and he starts with some very kind words about the video, but then he goes on to mention how he just got his very first copyright strike on his YouTube channel from Don Henley's legal team. You know, Don Henley from the Eagles. Not those Eagles. So I just got my first copyright strike by Don Henley's lawyers and they took down my number one song. This gentleman had done a cover of The Boys of Summer and Don Henley's legal team saw it fit to have it struck down and consequently removed from YouTube, which resulted in this guy receiving what's called a copyright strike on YouTube. Copyright strikes are not good. And I'll explain in just a bit a little bit more about that. Now you may be thinking as I was when I read this, but wait, there are so many cover songs all over YouTube. How could this possibly be true? Wouldn't all YouTube channels be in danger of copyright infringement and therefore in danger of the dreaded copyright strike which results in the video being removed by YouTube and the potential to have your entire channel removed if you get too many in too short a period of time? Well, the short answer is yes. They are in danger and so are you and so am I. If your video contains copyrighted materials, i.e. any cover song, there's a fine line between material that infringes on copyright and material that's struck down due to the infringement. You follow? You see, it's up to the copyright owner. The infringement in and of itself isn't a problem unless the owner decides it is. Spoiler alert, Don Henley has decided that this is a problem big time. That's right, your cover of Desperado played at your local dive bar that you proudly recorded and uploaded to YouTube is a problem. And it's making quite a stir with plenty out there in the community. Don Henley has one of the most distinctive, coolest voices. He really does. But man, I hate that guy. Let me back up a little and explain to you just how YouTube walks this copyright tightrope. But first, you need to understand briefly exactly what copyright is, at least, at least in the context of YouTube, and how YouTube treats copyright. You see, when a songwriter writes a song, they are the owner by default of all the rights of that song. And any use of that song is subject to their approval, and any monies generated from that song have to go to the copyright holder unless some other deal is agreed on. Makes total sense, right? Right. Now, when you upload your video, YouTube helps protect any copyrighted material that may be contained within your video by using its content ID system. This system scans your video for any copyrighted material, in this case it would be any music, and identifies it automatically. Yes, the YouTube algorithm is just that smart. If your video contains music on it that belongs to someone else, it'll then be flagged that it contains copyrighted material and you'll be notified as will the copyright holder. Now, this in and of itself doesn't present a problem. Every cover song that you hear on YouTube is flagged as copyrighted. It's labeled as copyrighted. But just remember, technically, if you want to use someone else's music in your video without any fear of potential issues in the future, you technically need their permission first. So getting back to what I said about it not necessarily being a problem. It's only a problem if the copyright owner, for some reason, wants you to take it down and tells YouTube to hit you with this potentially deadly channel-ending strike. Keep in mind that your video that contains copyrighted material will actually be generating money for the copyright owner, not you. And that's fair. They own the material, not you. So 
why then would a copyright owner such as Don Henley want to have you take down your material? You're seemingly only benefiting them. Well, thankfully, most artists don't care, but rather they're totally fine with their fans promoting their music for them for free and making them money to boot. That is most artists, but not Don Henley. Nope. So I decided to go down the rabbit hole a bit, and I looked up in Google. I did a search on YouTube copyright strikes Don Henley, and whoa, I was blown away by what I found. Looks like crotchety old Don has 60 lawyers, 60 lawyers on the active hunt going after YouTubers. Universal Music Group administrates the publishing for the Eagles and they have a team of 60 people, 60 people who sit in a room with computers and all they do all day long, five days a week, sometimes six days a week, is deal with the platforms such as YouTube and Facebook. He wasn't only going after people covering the songs, he's even going against people who are teaching the songs. And the great Rick Beato is probably one of the most outspoken. He's just out there. He's, th he's talking about fighting the fight for other musicians. Give me a break. Let's just say I quickly went through my channel material and deleted any videos that contained anything from Don Henley. Now, I have my opinion on this, and let's just say that I'm not really on the side of Don Henley. In fact, I kind of think he's a uh, so-and-so, but not for the reasons that you may think. You see, in today's world, the path of success for artists has shifted with different platforms and strategies coming to the forefront. And the traditional model exemplified by Henley's own success with the Eagles does not align with the realities faced by today's artists. The internet and platforms like YouTube, they offer unparalleled opportunities for artists to cultivate their fan base and gain exposure. From Don's perspective, his stance is that he's protecting intellectual property rights to support small artists from the tyranny of big tech, but he's actually way out of touch. He appears to be championing an old system argument in a new system ecosystem, and he's actually harming and pissing off the very people he claims that he's helping by having teams of lawyers scour the internet to take down their content and tarnish and potentially destroy their channels. Channels that may very well be their livelihood. Thanks so much, Don, for looking out for us little guys and not letting us cover or teach your tunes that you will actually be paid for anyway, for our own protection. I'm not even going to get into the fact that he sued a hotel in California because they called themselves, you guessed it, Hotel California. I'm not going to get into that one. Because quite frankly, I only care about you and me, and not Don Henley and his intentions. So what can you do to protect yourself from this and from other artists who follow in Don's footsteps? Brian Adams. I already told you that I got rid of my Eagles covers before they get rid of me. That should be obvious to do that. But I'm a budding YouTuber and I can't afford to lose my channel because I tried to teach some 12-year-old kid how to play the solo to Hotel California. Can I even say Hotel California? Your first choice is obvious, is never under any circumstance use material that is copyrighted, and then you never have to worry about this issue. This could even be background music playing at the Walmart as you, you know, do a selfie of yourself walking around shopping. You can get struck down or sued or removed from YouTube, even if you didn't know the music was playing in the background, okay? Or if you're going to use copyrighted material or do a cover song, do a YouTube search or Google search on other people who've covered the material and get a feel for how many other people have done it. If you want to cover Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran, if there's thousands of covers of it out there, chances are you're okay. Again, it doesn't guarantee you that it won't be struck against. It won't guarantee you that Ed Sheeran won't change his mind in 10 years, but it's a pretty good bet. And you could also do a YouTube search on what artists are known for doing copyright strikes. I've heard the Beatles do it, <laughs> um, but I've done some videos where I give lessons on Beatles tunes, and they get labeled as copyrighted, but I've never had an issue where they were told I have to take them down, and I never received a strike. Not yet. But again, Brian Adams is one that you need to be aware of. And no, you can't change the song to Summer of 79. I tried that one and it failed. Just kidding. 
But if you're a content creator, i.e. someone who plays music and puts it on YouTube or is thinking about putting it on YouTube, you need to be familiar with this. I'd hate to see you, or me for that matter, establish a YouTube channel only to have it potentially destroyed by doing something that you didn't even know you were doing wrong. And as for Don, thanks a lot, pal.